So PyGoobo and PyGoobo Designer are under active development, and as a result, a few things have changed since um, I made the walkthrough videos for building the simple calculator. Um, and so I'm going to show you some of the important differences um, because they affect the user interface. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a new project in my PyCharm projects, and I will call this um, simple calculator redo. And I'm just going to start with the empty project template. And then we're going to go ahead and I'm going to CD into that folder. So that's in my um, PyCharm projects, um, simple calculator redo folder. And then I'm going to start pygubu dash designer with um, call it simple.ui. Um, and uh, it's saying there's no such um, file or directory because I haven't saved it yet. So um, let's go ahead and save it. And I'm going to save this into, unfortunately, I have to go all the way back to where I was. Let's go users, mark G, PyCharm projects. Um, and then I should have a simple UI in here, simple calculator. And I'm going to save it as simple.ui. there. Um, and then I'm going to go ahead and the first difference is I told you to make a top level frame um, and put everything under that. Um, but if you do that now, um, stretch won't work correctly. So everything else will work fine. You can still use it for your calculator, but the stretch won't work if you resize the window. So instead, if you want stretch to work, what you have to do is use one of these top level containers, top level widget. And if you use one of those, you can give it an ID like top level still. Um, and then there's some settings that you can um, put right on this thing that weren't on the frame. So for example, you can put a title here, which is gonna be what shows up in the window when your app runs. So let's do this. Um, and I think I did an Ohm's Law calculator. So let's do, uh, do the same thing. Um, Ohm's Law Redo. And I might have to actually escape that thing. We'll go ahead and see. Um, and then there's also this resizable dropdown. I think you can just use the default, um, but you can also control whether your window is resizable in both directions, only horizontally, only vertically, or not in anything. So you can make a window that's not resizable at all here if you want. Um, I'm going to leave the default, which I believe is both. And if it isn't both, I'm going to fix that. Um, and then most of the rest of this you can leave alone. Um, uh, just as before, I might add some padding to it, just like I would have with a top level frame. OK, so that's the um, top level. And then underneath that, I'm going to have um, a label um, for, the, um, for the name of my calculator. So this will be the uh, um, calculator label. And the text is going to be um, Ohm's Law Calculator. And I might need to escape that single quote. We'll see. Um, and then for the text here, um, I want to change the font to Arial. And I'm going to do 16 point bold. And then the justify will be center. So the text will be in the middle. Um, and then the next thing I want is a frame to hold my controls. So a frame called control frame. And this is going to have my controls in it. And you'll notice that this thing doesn't have any uh, um, weights or anything. If I go to layout um, and set grid, it doesn't have anything in it yet, but when I add controls to it, it will show a new tool. So let me go ahead and do that. So um, I'm going to go ahead and add a uh, um, two labels and um, two entries. So 
Under Control and Display, I'm going to add two labels and then two entries. And then this first label here, that's going to be, this is all going to be grid. And this first label is going to be row zero, column zero. The second one is going to be row zero, column one. Actually, no, I'm sorry, it's, that was right. It was row one, column zero. And then this text entry here, that's going to be row zero, column one. And this one is going to be row one, column one. So I end up with two labels next to two entries. And then for positioning, I want both of the labels to be sticky east and both of the entries to be sticky west. And then this control frame here, um, that's going to be centered. Um, and only, only in the center, so it'll be floating essentially. Um, so for the labels, let's go ahead and uh, change the text. So this will be volts colon and this will be um, ohms and I'm going to calculate amps based on that. Um, and then so this entry, so this thing here, this is going to be volts label, which I don't really need because I'm not going to change it in my code. But And then this one's going to be ohms label. And then this one is going to be my volts entry. And then this one is going to be my ohms entry. And then I'm also going to have another lab, uh, another um, frame at the bottom, um, which is going to have my um, a search button and a results box. So for the search button, I'm going to go add a button. And then for the results box, I'm going to put a label. So this frame is going to be the results frame. And then this button is going to be the calculate button. And the text is going to be calculate amps. And then this label, it's going to have no text to start with, but this is going to be the results label. OK, and then um, for layout, what I'm going to do is this is going to be grid layout here as well. So this button is going to be grid. I'm going to just stack these horizontal, um, just stack these vertically. So the calculate button will be first, and then the results label will be underneath it. Um, this frame, um, I'm going to go ahead and I'll keep it centered, stuck to the bottom. This label, I'm going to keep it centered but stuck to the top. And then this one is going to be in the middle. Um, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what we have so far. So we're going to preview this. And then if I stretch it, it doesn't resize. So in order to make this resize, I have to put weights on the things that I want to stretch. So if I'm resizing in this direction, I need to specify what rows are stretchy. And if I want to go in this direction, I need to de define what columns are stretchy. So everything is all in the same column. So everything basically gets stretchy in this column. So let's start there. So I start from the top. And uh, if this is a, this, it, this has grid things under it, which it does, then it adds this new pane here, which wasn't in the previous version. So in the previous version, what I would do is I would put weights on these children here and weights on these children here, and that would tell the parent how to stretch. But now the control is all on the parent, and so you select which child you want to adjust. 
So from the top level, the first child in column row zero, column zero is this label. And so I want to make sure that this guy here, if this is selected, that's the label. And so the label um, is um, not stretchy. The row is not stretchy, but the column is because everything in this column is stretchy. So this is zero. This is one for the label frame. And then the control frame, that's the middle one. This one, I want the row to stretch. So I'm going to put a weight of one on that. Um, and then everything in the column is stretchy because they're all going to move. Um, and then for this last one, this bottom one, I click on that. And then um, the row is not stretchy. Um, the column is. Okay, so let's go ahead and try it. And if I resize it, you'll see that the top doesn't stretch and the bottom doesn't stretch, but the middle stretches. So that's what I want. Um, now I can also do the same thing with these frames in the middle. So for example, let's change the layout of this. Um, let's say I want to put the calculate button on this side and the um, entry box on this side, the results label rather, um, and then I want to have it stretch in the middle. So what I'm going to do is let's go back to the results frame and I'm going to select that calculate button. Um, I'm going to pin that to the west and then this thing I'm going to pin to the east and then I'm also going to put this thing in um, row zero column one so it's on the same um, row as the button is. So now they're drawn right on top of each other um, because they're all inside of this frame. So I need to spread them out by making the frame bigger so that the east and west are separated. So I select the parent and I pin it all the way across and that causes everything to spread out. So this thing's west, this thing's east. Um, for demonstration purposes, let me put some text in here because you really can't see what it's doing. So I'm going to go back to general and I'm going to put some text. 10 volts at 3 ohms is 6 amps. Doesn't matter, just some text. Okay, so now let's preview. And then if I drag this, it's not actually spreading it out. So what I want to do to make it spread out is I want to make the label stretch and then I want to justify the text to be east. So this label here, I'm going to set the justification to it. So that's going to justify right. And then the stretch on this, I set from the parent. So this first thing here, if I go to layout, um, this first thing here, that's going to be the button. And I don't want that to stretch at all. So I make sure that the weight here is zero and the weight here for the column is zero. So row weight and column weight are both zero. This one is actually going to be the second here. And so this one, the row doesn't stretch at all, but the column does. So now this thing's going to get bigger as I resize it, but the text is going to be pinned to the right, and so it should look like I want it. So let's go ahead and try it, and it works. Okay, so that is what you need to do to get stretch working. And then the other thing you need to know that's different is the code that you generate from this application template is a little different because it uses a top level frame instead of a regular frame. So I'm going to generate that and then I'm going to copy all of it and I'm going to go to my PyCharm project. Actually, let me just, oh, I have to save it. Let me, let me save that first. Let me close the preview as well. 
close the preview, um, file, save, or control S to save. And then I can go back to my PyCharm. I have my simple UI here. I'm going to select all and then paste in my simple app. So this is actually simpler now because the main code just makes a simple app object and then calls the run method on it. And then the constructor for the simple app object is just basically exactly the same as what you saw before. So it's going to make a builder object and it's going to take the um, UI file that we created and build from that file. And then you can use get object to get some stuff and so on.